Got to work. So I know I said I'm gonna make a video about systems thinking in the universe, which is kind of tall, you know, quite the task, but you know, it's just for fun, so I'm not really gonna dive into it too much. Um, it's mostly gonna be just me thinking about the universe, not so much systems thinking, although there are gonna be relationships between the components I'm describing. But it's gonna be loosely based on system thinking. Anyway, the reason why I wanted to do it is because Despite the fact that if you go to systems thinking Wikipedia and it, you know, in the first like three sentences, four sentences when it's generally describing what it is, it says, you know, system, a, system, a complex system is this, 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 and ultimately the universe itself. But despite that, you don't see anybody, not even physicists who study the universe approaching it, approaching it as if it was a complex system of interconnected and interdependent parts that make up kind of a functioning whole of what it is. It's the universe to everyone, I can't say everyone, but to physicists, what I, what I see is, you know, you have this, all these physicists and they, they become hyper focused on one thing about the universe because that's what they chose to study it makes sense and most science uses the reductionist approach of analysis which is taking a component you know and just looking at that component and basically nothing else so you have like a like an entire field of phys physicists and people who are kind of responsible for just thinking about one component and not the entire thing and how it relates to everything. They might think think about it every once in a while, but that's not their focus. You know, their, their focus is on that one little thing. And they'll spend their entire career studying that one component. And they might have, you know, they might bring in a connection, a direct connection between that that component has with something else because it's, it's effects, you know, directly... A, Apply to the component they're studying, which go, which is obvious. But for the most part, that's the extent that they kind of branch out of their own little isolation of their the the, the imposed isolation of their component when they're studying it. And I just think that uh, systems thinking would be so useful when thinking about the universe because yeah the universe is very big there's a lot of empty space but space itself is far from empty it's got lots of stuff traveling through it all the time and uh including you know the, the cool thing of uh quantum fluctuations which is very interesting and the <clears throat> you know from birth to now you know if you thought about it as a, as a system where every component uh, not so much has a purpose, but uh, is it may, may, probably does have you know has have, have has a very a higher purpose than just uh, a you know direct kind of purpose. Like say, the purpose of everything is to well, we can look at everything and say what are, what is everything doing. And everything living and not, especially living, we are excellent at doing this, is heat dispersion. Dissipating heat and wasting energy. And having energy dissipate over time. That is what everything is doing in the universe. And that might be what the purpose of everything is. I mean, it is what our fundamental laws are set up for. And if you look at it that way, perhaps the entire universe is simply performing a function upon energy itself to dissipate it so that it can no longer do any work. And of course, that is the supposed end of the universe itself is what's called heat death, where energy is fully dissipated and entropy is maxed out and there's complete disorder and no more energy to do any work. So you think maybe that's, maybe that end result is, uh, you know, it's kind of the opposite of what the beginning of the Big Bang was, wasn't it? A complete, dense, complex, ordered 
I guess you could say, despite it being small, form of matter that uh, is definitely the opposite of what the end of the universe would be, which is that matter completely spread out till it can do no more work. So, I just wish physicists were looking at the universe like that, that connection, like those two things, like how the beginning and end of the universe are essentially opposite, how the time between the beginning and the end of the universe, every single thing is dissipating energy. What if the universe is simply a, a, a component within a larger system where, you know, entropy might be increasing here, but that's the purpose because externally this universe is purpose is actually to decrease entropy and maintain order for a larger system by neutralizing unstable energy, which was why the Big Bang exploded, you know. So that that's thinking in systems. Everything's connected, every component, if it exists, is there for a reason. That's a, a philosophical kind of idea. If it's there... It has a purpose. There's a reason. There's a cause for it to be there. Uh, nothing's just fucking random. So, yeah, I'm just going to have fun with it and see what I can figure out. Thanks for listening.